real. Yeah, but that shit's crazy. But speaking of, but this is a uh, Yelp state pimp. Uh, Texas school district pulls Anne Frank's <laughs> diary, uh, Bible, along with uh, thirty-eight other books from the shelves after complaints. Uh, a Texas school dish has pulled the Bible. <sighs> That's still fucking me up. An <laughs> illustrated version of Anne Frank's diary and about 40 other books from his libraries after the tome sparked complaints from parents and community members. Uh, the Keeler uh, Independent School District emailed uh, principals uh, Tuesday ordering the temporary move of all books that were challenged last year so the librarians and campus staff can review the titles and make sure they're in line with the new district policy. Hmm. Hmm. What is that policy? Uh, <laughs> no niggas, no Jews. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. You see, I didn't laugh. I'm just like, what is that policy? That's a good question. Like, I mean, you, that's easy to throw out there. Like, hey, this is our new policy. I need you to follow it. Okay. Uh, can you define your policy so we can clearly follow it and not just be what you say out of the words of your mouth? Because that could change tomorrow. But we just get, we really get to the point, like I said, that's why we need Thanos. We just cannibalizing ourselves, this whole society, dog. <sighs> next thing, what's going to happen next? They're going to be like, we can't teach math? Them, them, them numbers <laughs> from that brown country? Yeah. Them, them, them Arabic, Arabic numbers? Them a Arab numbers, we don't want them talking in the classroom, so get them out. Come on, man. That, that, I mean, hey, look. <clears throat> those 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 people down here, like that that whole thought process that they have around that man is 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 unreal. Like when you pull it back all the way to them pulling those books, you pull it back to that CRT situation, um, mm -hmm. like it, it's just, it's like a fear. So they're grabbing everything that they can grab onto and trying to hold on to it and trying to whitewash everything away so that we have no history because these young guys, like we talked about with that chip, okay, we can bring it full circle back to the chip. They have so much access to so much information, more more ways than we did that a lot of these kids are, are more knowledgeable about some of those things. I know, but that's scary for a 50, 60 year old Caucasian male to know that these young kids have a little bit more knowledge of power. Mm -hmm. One of the books that's on the ban list is um, a book by a transgendered female who had a who, who had or has a TV show on on kids t on t on TLC. I said kids TLC, thinking I'm at work. My bad. And so, um, yeah, some of the reasons. The policy states that the book has to have a challenge. So I don't know if the challenge has to be valid per se, but if you can challenge the book, then they put it, I guess, on this list, and then they remove it until it can be reviewed by a panel or a committee or group. A lot of the books, just kind of from my brows, they were like LGBTQIA related, or they had, you know, some type of like, um, maybe like a graphic scene or maybe a theme or related around LGBTQIA. So I feel like it's kind of kind of an attack on on that. So I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying, Slim, in regards to like they don't want the youth to have access to knowledge anywhere. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I, I would like to know what their theory was in taking the Bible out like that. I, what, what was what was the logic? Or as Kim said, what was the challenge there? What was your well, challenge? Well, I'd like to know that. One. Well, it goes I mean, in line with the books that they that they took off. They took off the shelves due to dealing with violence and death and destruction and all the things that are in the Bible. That's why. Uh, I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. That's why I said when, when you start okay. when, when you start this, it is a very fucking slippery slope. It is a slippery cliff. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Because if you say violence, inappropriate sexual behavior, there's sex, there's violence, there's there's death, there's you can say if you want to be real crazy, there are zombies in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying there's all these things that a, that a, someone who wanted to be an asshole could pull and say this was in the Bible. You took this book off the shelf for this. Why is the Bible still in in this school? In, in this school? You're right. It has all that adultery, slavery, all that. 
Yeah. It's all that. Right. So it's, 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 but the thing is, you, how do you teach people to not be inappropriate? How do you teach young people right and wrong when you take the things out of the classroom that says, here's this community of people. They're not bad people just because they have a different sexuality than you. Meanwhile, they're learning this from their parents, their grand, whatever brainwashing motherfuckers might be getting at home. But you're taking away all this education and knowledge that gives them info into a other person or group as they're deemed in our society. And then you're taking away from educators to be even to talk about these these topics in the classroom, let alone without the books. Yep. It becomes it because it's the basic it's the basic definition of like programming, man. You yeah. program when you program something, you put in everything that you want to make the program run the way that you want it to work. Yeah. And you take all the shit that yeah. you don't want, you know what I'm saying, the program to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they're taking out all the shit that they can still control and they're trying to pull it all out so that they can still continue to run the program that they've been running. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they and they yeah. They are basically saying <clears throat> you need to put all those individuals that felt free to come out of the quote unquote closet and all this shit. We want you to go back. We want you to go back in and pretend that you weren't here. It's all it's all a, 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 an agenda. You know, so I said coming out the closet and it just hit me today. Um Tevin Campbell. Yeah, he did. He came out the closet. I was like, baby, no, I I wasn't surprised. That, that door was up. Hmm. But I'm glad you spoke. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's standing in his truth. We he knew knew the truth. Yeah, but I'm glad you can stand in it, sir. We know. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all bad. Well, all right, man. Uh, you just stay together, uh, Slim. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we already talked about that. Oh, I did have it open. Okay, we already talked about that. Ah. Uh, Okay, so you got teachers not reading books, and we have uh, educators with some, uh, I don't want to say bad behavior, but it is showing a bias that may have been learned during their time in learning education. So here's a a Yale study that suggests racial bias among preschool teachers, specifically black boys. Um, I believe in the study, they are told they're going to be showed a video clip of children at a table playing or reading or whatever, and they are told to look for or make note of inappropriate behavior that they see. Oh, turn this out. Features this video clip of four preschool students. Their instructions, look for misbehavior and click when you see it. The study was kind of deceptive. None of the kids in the video actually misbehaved. The researchers were using eye tracking software. What they actually wanted to study was who the teachers were watching. Both black and white teachers spent significantly more time watching the black boy in the video. This study showed that even preschool teachers can treat kids differently based on their race without even realizing it. Look elsewhere in the U.S. school system and you'll see this show up in other ways, like at this middle school in Bryan, Texas. They gave students Texas tickets for offenses like disrupting class or using profanity. Black students were four times more likely than white students to receive those tickets. Nationwide, black boys miss way more school due to suspensions than any other group. And this can start a kind of chain reaction. Missing weeks of school due to suspensions makes students much more likely to drop out. Without a diploma, you're much less likely to earn a living wage and much more likely to be incarcerated. All this missing school is helping to drive the highest poverty and incarceration. Stay right there. Yeah, man. Starts at a young age. I'm going to give two cents on this real quick. Um, For those folks that have kiddos that are in the, the school setting, it's super important for you to be able to advocate for your child because this study was very interesting. It is, um, I don't know, I don't want to call it a racism, but it's, it's a bias. For whatever reason, society has conditioned people to believe that brown 
or black is bad. And so, and it doesn't help that um, us as minorities, and I'm a woman, and I, I've raised up children. I'd be like, oh, you bad. I try not to say that anymore because that's a, you know, children actually, you can desensitize a child to where they think that shit's funny. You call them bad and then they laugh because they think that shit's funny. So don't do that. But we need to be able to advocate for our children in our educational settings for reasons like this. This is like the, what do they call it? The principal, the prison pipeline. Yes. I mean, they've been saying that for years, but it's super important to be able to like level set and say, I feel like my child is being targeted because they stand out in this educational setting. Call the biases where they are, because if you don't, you're going to have situations where, you know, your kid's going to be suspended for bullshit that their peer, if their peer does, it's just a, you know, a redirection. So y'all be, be able to advocate for your babies in the school setting. Yeah. Yeah, you you, def, you definitely have to, um, yeah, because you, as someone who has had to go to the school for some bullshit, uh, motherfuckers will try you and your kids, and you gotta let them know, no, no, sir, not not today or ma'am, depending on uh-uh. who the person you're talking to that day. Because I mean, because I, I mean, I, I hold my kids to a standard. Like they fucking around, we are gonna have a talk. But you fucking with them, we are gonna have a talk. Same same energy for everybody. <laughs> All right, but yeah, keep it moving. Speaking of the same energy, uh, New R. Kelly trial begins in Chicago. Disgraced singer Uh-oh. facing child pornography and obstruction of justice charges. Now people are saying, uh, didn't he just have a trial? This is a federal trial, and it has to do with uh, the feds thinking that he may have fixed the state trial. That he, uh, according to New York Times, federal prosecutors now allege Kelly and two co-defendants fixed the state trial, saying Kelly arranged for a girl and her parents to travel overseas to prevent them from talking with police prior to his indictment. And then later, excuse me, sorry, later instructed them to lie to a grand jury about the case. The girl, who is now in her 30s and whose name has not been named publicly, will reportedly testify. So he basically flew out, flew out the girl and her mama. So is it flew in? Or fl- cause, cause <laughs> you, you fl- they got flewed out. When you, when you flew, when you, I'm flew in, flew out. You come to me. Well, no, it, he, he was he was he was allowing them to get flewed out, so that way he could right. be out. But you see what I'm saying? Because yeah, usually, I, I see your point. Maybe we can use it saying, interchangeably. I mean, yeah, I guess I hope so. Because usually, person, I, I got flewed out. I mean, you come and. Yeah, mm. the flu, the flu person. Okay. Yeah. But she, she got flu elsewhere. So. Okay. He he assisted in her going. I won't even say it. no. No, you got. I just fuck with you. This yeah. <laughs> this is Robert. I can't even make it make sense. You no. know, right, sir, right. I don't know what else to say. Okay. Oh, Robert. <sighs> Damn it! I hate that he had to be a motherfucker. He wasn't ready. <sighs> oh. <No. laughs> Well played. Anyway, she, was. <laughs> she reminded him. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my God! Child rape is not funny. All right, moving back on. I, I, I guess he's go hand in hand. The rise of lonely single men. Dating apps in a drastically changing relationship landscape. Dating opportunities for heterosexual men are diminishing as relationship standards rise. Men represent 62% of dating app users, lowering their chances for matches. I've read this line, and it still cracks me up. Men need to address skill deficits to meet healthier relationship expectations. Damn. Nigga, learn how to talk. Go to therapy. Get your shit right. You got your mama's basement. Uh, yes. I don't know. I'm just giving some of the shit I had changed in my life to be better for people. I don't know, bro. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> right. But I think the article speaks to how, like, women are taught these yes. things. Yes. Like, women are taught how to be good communicators. We're taught how to, how to necessarily navigate these things because women are taught that they actually, most women, that Elvis and Joy wouldn't have and had over here. Yeah. But, you know, most women are taught that they have to do certain things, so they have to be proficient in certain areas. The relationship standards uh, paragraph was kind of funny, too. I thought that one was kind of interesting. Funny. It was like, 
You got to be...